Hey guys, today we're talking a little bit about how to start a YouTube channel. Now, I started my channel in 2007 and really took it as an extension to my blog. I have a website, Lady in the Blog, and whenever I needed to do a toy review or a DIY craft or something that needed to be um, embedded into my blog, that's when I would post onto YouTube. And that continued on for 10 years. If you check my About section, I have over 7 million views. Um, the vast majority of those views came from crafts, um, toy and coupon videos. These are not things that I really want to focus on anymore. And so I am really truly looking at this year, 2018, as a clean slate for me because I'm really almost starting afresh when it comes to um, new genre, new topics, um, trying to reach a new audience. I have 20,000 followers, but again, those people are really uh, Rainbow Loom fanatics and, um, you know, I don't know, toy review people. I don't even know where I got these people over the years. I never thought in a million years um, to look at YouTube as its own audience. And like I said, it was always this extension that I kind of worked on. The last year, 2018, I decided in January that I was just going to take this very seriously and try to upload um, daily, Monday through Friday. And I've been doing a ton of research. I've, I've started to follow the right people and listen to what they had to say. And these are the tips that I've been sort of paying attention to. So first off the bat, I've been using a uh, application called TubeBuddy. And I was using the free service for a really long time and I just upgraded and now I pay the uh, monthly fee. And I find that there's real value in it because you can bulk um, you could bulk do tasks. So if I wanted to add end cards to my 1600 videos, I could do that at 500 to, um, 500 videos a pop. I don't necessarily have to do it one at a time and that was very appealing to me. Um, if you're starting a brand new channel, maybe you don't need to worry about doing those sort of auto bulk services just yet. Maybe just stick with the free service until um, you feel that you need a little bit more. I'm gonna put the link below so you can check that out. Um, whenever I'm I'm searching for um, what I want to do a video on. I always like to do a keyword search and see how many people are actually searching for this this item, this, this sort of thought before I get into the whole the whole process. So you know, if I'm doing a, the the, um, the last video I did was on um, Amazon Alexa, the uh, the Echo, the Amazon Echo, and so I looked at how many different ways people search that term, and so it's Amazon Alexa returns a very high search, there's a very high amount of search searches that are happening in the year, but there's also a lot of high amount of videos that are out there. So am I going to get pulled into that mix? Will you find me when there are 300 other thousand people all trying to compete for that same term? So when you're just starting, you really should think about, um, you know, can you compete? Can you compete on these really big wig sort of searches and and I don't I don't know the answer to that maybe you can maybe you can't if you have a niche channel your odds are are in better favor for you so if you're only doing a beauty channel and every single one of your videos are beauty centric then YouTube will sort of classify you as a beauty blogger these are this is a beauty expert this is somebody who only talks about beauty subjects and so um when you when you get videos that get popped out, they are already registering you as somebody in that category. For me, because I started in this hodgepodge kind of way, it's a little bit more difficult, and that's why I'm struggling with um, sort of finding my voice in 2018 because I don't want to start new channels. I just don't have the capacity for that to start a, you know, like, I don't even know, like a fashion and beauty channel and then a personal update channel and then a commentary channel. I can't, I cannot do that. I do not want to do that. Um, so just think about when you're, when you're fighting for search terms and as, as far as SEO is concerned, think about how many people you're competing against. And um, you know, try try for the lower stuff. Like you don't always have to go for the big, the big, the big hits, the big fish. Um, tags you're allowed, um, you know, five hundred characters and tags. Use them all. 
So, you know, when you're searching, like, um, just to do, for example, like Wrinkle in Time, I just did a movie, uh, a, you know, a, a blog post on Wrinkle in Time, another example that's too much content out there about that particular movie. So it's that my video is not doing particularly well. But, you know, when you're doing Wrinkle in Time, you know, put if you've talked, if you've spoken about the celebrities, tag those names, um, you know, is it a review, Wrinkle in Time review? Is it a movie, movie review, Wrinkle in Time movie review? view um you know like celebrity like you can think of a bunch of different ways that you can sort of tag that video don't you know don't just write wrinkle in time movie review and leave it at that you know they're giving you 500 characters use 500 characters um same vein when you're in adding a description write a paragraph if you can i'm i i need to do better at this a lot of people that i follow they write two three four paragraphs and um they're really getting in those keywords they're knocking them in two three four five times because they want youtube to um, see those search terms happening in the text. Furthermore, I have heard from several people that I'm watching on YouTube that YouTube is starting to listen to your content. So if you have a video about, um, you know, wedge heels, you have to say the words wedge heels over and over again. So for that instance, I should be saying YouTube tips, you know, or video upload tips or how to start a YouTube channel. If I say these terms over and over again while I'm making this video, there's some sort of, I apparently, there's YouTube has some sort of thing where they're listening to your content as well and being able to track whether or not you're actually saying what you're saying your title and description is, is proving to be. So are you saying and are you writing the same text? Am I am I I'm writing how to start a YouTube channel? Am I saying that as well in my in my script? So um, you know you have to be conscious about the keywords that you're actually physically saying as well. Don't have documentation on this from youtube.com. This is just people that I've been reading, I'm sorry, seeing um, the f people that I've been just been following and um, you take everything with a grain of salt, but you take everything and you soak it in. Um, next up, we have the consistency, how often you decide to upload. Me uploading once a day, it's a little bit easier because I am just doing commentary. Uh, I'm choosing to talk about movies and I'm talking about daily questions that are happening in my life and every now and then I throw a daily vlog in, which I don't like. I don't like doing those. Um, so I, I never will become somebody that does that on a regular basis. My husband actually hates that. So, um, you know, I have a consistency of doing it every day. And I think what I'm going to do is choose like 10 a.m. So every day at 10 a.m. I'm going to pop up a video. And I am not ready to commit yet to that. I'm not ready to write in my banner new video Monday to Friday every day at 10 a.m. But if you really want to build an audience, that's something that you should consider. Not every day, but a, a, a sort of a calendar, if you will. So if it's Wednesdays at 2 p.m., then make sure every Wednesday at 2 p.m. you have something scheduled to go live. Um, you know, there's plenty of people that do really well with that, and then they spend, they stay an hour on, you know, whenever their, their video goes live, they actually stay there and they spend an hour or so commenting back and, and getting, engaging with their community and making sure that they're responding to everything that they um, receive within the, the hour of when they post. And that's really how you sort of get people virally interested in what you have to do. It's almost like a TV program. Oh my goodness, a Wednesday at 2 p.m. It's time to see what Vera's rant of the week is or whatever the story is. So um, the consistency of uploads is critical. I have decided to do daily uploads because I am committed. I have committed personally to hit a goal of 10 million impressions by the end of 2018 just because I want to um, really try to push myself and reach big. I really want to try to get it. I don't know if I'm going to get it, but I'm trying to keep a positive attitude about that. But I figured if I say, oh, 8 million views by 2018, I'll just be really lax about everything. And I don't want that attitude. I'm really looking at YouTube as a new source of passive income. And, you know, that's sort of my my way of thinking holist, wholly about everything lately. I'm really looking into passive income streams because, you know, courses and, and YouTube videos and things like that, you know, you want to make money when you're sleeping. I mean, that's how you make, 
That's how people who make the most money make money when they're sleeping. And you really need to think about that. I mean, yes, I do sponsored posts at the Wazoo on my blog and I'll work. You know, yesterday I had three campaigns come at me out of nowhere and I and I was crazy and I did them, but it was crazy. I was filming and I was, you know, I, I had problems uploading something, but I got it done, of course. But passive income is a lot more lax. And so I'm really trying to understand ways to make that more um, prevalent, more, more more priority as far as what's coming in uh, money-wise for my family. Uh, back to YouTube, you want to come up with really interesting uh, thumbnails. And you can use PicMonkey. You can use Canva. I tend to use Canva because they actually have YouTube templates readily available for you. So uh, it's really easy for you. All you have to do is sort of drag one of your photos in or multiple photos in from your video that you're doing. And you just sort of pop some color or whatever it is you want to do. Some people add text. Some people don't. It's entirely up to you. You can decide how you want to play with that. Um, you know, your your page itself, you should really, if you're just beginning, if you're just beginning your YouTube channel, you should think about how you want your your playlist to lay out. Like, you know, what what is your story? What is it that you're providing people? Um, what information are you are you hoping that they gain when they visit you? And you know, create your your front page in that way. So, are you teaching them? you know, budget travel, luxury travel, travel with kids. I mean, I don't know what your layout is, but you know, make playlists for them. So when they come to you and they never met you before, then they go, oh great, I got, I'm so excited. I really want to learn about budget travel. She has six videos. Let me, let me just play this whole thing. Um, I have a mastermind group and you know, something that I recently told them, I'll put the link down below if you guys are interested in that. But something I recently told them was a lot of the way that I consume media is when I'm in the shower, I, I get a playlist going on YouTube. YouTube is my podcast. So I'll get like five or six people that I follow, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'll play the video. I'll turn the camera away from me because we all know that Mark is watching. And I, um, I just let them go. I just listen to these people talk to me about SEO, keywords, ranking, thumbnails, you know, conversion, whatever the story is, and I let it go. Affiliate marketing is another thing I'm, I'm sort of like um, starting to listen a little bit more to as well. And while I'm showering in those moments, I'm sort of like absorbing what these people have to say. These are just regular people like you and me who are looking to help other people. And, uh, you know, I love that. I love that about YouTube because it really is a platform of sharing wealth and sharing knowledge. And so I hope in some way this video helps anybody who's out there trying to um, start their YouTube channel as well. Um, my, I have about 650 channels that I follow. Again, I started in 2007. I don't know who these people are. I have no idea how I followed half of these people. My goal by the end of the month is a little bit at a time to just go through that whole list and unfollow all these people. Like, I don't know who these people are. So I'm just going to unfollow everybody that, that don't really offer me any really, you know, any good information basically and fill my channel with people who, uh, fill my profile, my subscription profile with people who really offer me substantial information or humor or joy, whatever it is, whatever have you. Um, and I don't know if YouTube, um, I don't know if YouTube sort of defines you based on who you follow. That's another conversation that we could have, but you might want to think about that. You might want to say, look, I am a beauty blogger. If I follow a hundred beauty bloggers, will YouTube recognize me as somebody who's interested in that content? And would they then recognize me as somebody who's um, writing that content? I don't know that answer. That's just something that we're going to put a pin in. I don't know if they do that. I think, I think Instagram does that. I think Instagram bases uh, uh, your profile, that who they think you are based on who you follow. I don't know if YouTube does that. Um, I am not 
who I follow because who I follow are people who are teaching me how to be a better YouTuber. That is not what I'm doing. I'm more of a commentary sort of, you know, whatever's, I'm just getting whatever's out of my mind, out of my mind sort of storyteller. Um, so I'm, I'm not that person. So that's something to think about even for me. Am, am I doing a disservice by following all these type of people? I don't know. Um, but either way, I'm going to keep doing it because that's the knowledge I need to learn. I need to have that information in my brain. Um, okay, so we talked about thumbnails. We talked about, uh, let me see what else I wanted to tell you guys. Oh, commenting. So you have to be very active within the community. Um, I've made it as part of my like sort of everyday list to just go ahead and comment on uh, random videos like whatever videos are going live on YouTube I just sort of pop around leave a comment and then if people comment back to me I comment back to them and we're just having a big con old conversation all over the web the more places you leave your name the more likelihood somebody is going to come back and check out your profile this is very circa 2005 blogging you know like leave a comment on a blog hopefully somebody will come and check out your profile that's sort of what's happening over here on YouTube of course anybody that leaves a comment on your blog you definitely, I'm sorry, your vlog, you definitely want to um, respond back to them 110%. Uh, don't ask your friends to follow your YouTube channel. I, um, I think it does a disservice for you if you have all these random people following you and then they don't uh, view your stuff. So I have really stayed away from the, um, you know, like my channel and I'll like your channel. And, you know, I don't know, like, I don't know if that's the, to the best of everyone's thing. Like, it's not about getting a higher subscription number. It's really about getting views. Like, I don't care if I have 20,000 followers. I care how many views I'm getting, right? Like, I'm not getting paid on subscribers. I'm getting paid on how many views. How good are my search terms? How long are people staying on my videos? These are the things that I'm most interested in. How long, where is the drop off where I'm doing a video? Where do people drop off? That's my concern. Yes, of course, as a subscriber, they are more likely to then watch more videos. I'm not saying that's not a gain. It's an absolute gain. But do I want a random person to follow me that I know will never view any of my videos? Does that bring me value? No, it doesn't bring me any value. So I don't know. Like, I I just don't know. Like, actually, I just, if I could, like, out of these 20,000 people that I had, I wish there was a way to, like, go and look and see who's inactive like has this person not been on YouTube for 10 years and get her off my profile like I literally don't need her on my profile because I feel like if you have 20,000 people and 10,000 of them are no longer on YouTube that makes me look bad that I have 10,000 people that are not active and then they're not on my you know they're not checking out my videos so I wish there was a way that we would have more that we would have control over that like I don't and I guess you know I don't know you can't you can't decide who follows you you can't determine who follows you I guess is the, is the answer to that but it does definitely like you know like I don't know like my mom like I guess my mom watches my videos but there's certain people that I know like they're like oh I'll follow you and, I, and, in, my, and in my head I'm going don't follow me because you're not you're not you don't go on YouTube I don't watch you following me but I don't say anything you know you just sort of like nod your head I'm like yeah thank you great you're gonna follow me um, but you know, that's the goal. The goal is really to hit, to get into search. The goal is really to keep people on as long as possible because the watch time, that's what YouTube really cares about. YouTube cares about how long you can keep people on your channel. How long can you keep people jumping from one video to the next video to the next video? Oh, one last thing. I know this is 18 minutes. I'm going to end this right now. The last thing I want to say is I have, and this is a new, this is new. I know I've been on YouTube for 11 years, but I'm, been on YouTube for three months in my head because I have never looked at YouTube as its own platform until 2018. I need you to understand that. This is my real first shot at this rodeo. Everything else that has ever happened to me on YouTube has been luck. I have 1,600 videos that do not have keywords attached to them. I have no tags in 1,600 videos. I've been going back the last three months, one page at a time, adding keywords and descriptions in all my videos, and I have 7 million views. So go check, figure that one out. I don't know how that happened. But the last thing I want to say what I've been playing with with YouTube is I've been doing long videos and I've been doing short videos. So I've been doing two-minute videos and I've been doing 18-minute videos. And the reason why I'm doing this, the strategy for this is um, I just figured I'm going to try to get 
different types of people that are wanting to consume different types of content. I'm not going to do every single video being 20 minutes long because I don't feel everybody has 20 minutes to watch a video. I don't have 20 minutes every single day to watch a video. I sometimes I do and I do do that when I, you know, like again, I take a shower, I have 20 minutes right there to watch videos, but sometimes if I'm in the car and I have 5 minutes I'm driving to Target, I'll pop a video on and on my phone and I'll just let it play. Like I said, I treat these as my podcast and maybe I only have four minutes. So I like to go um, high and low with my time and I and I and I'm trying I'm doing that intentionally because I'm really trying to hit all different types of consumers, consumers, like the people that are consuming my media. Um, because I, I think on search, like I might get somebody who's looking for a four minute movie review and then I might get somebody that's looking for a 10 minute movie review. And I wanna give everybody both those options. So that's also a test that I'm doing right now as well. I'm trying to see um, which reviews are doing better. But that's harder, that's, that's easier said than done because sometimes it's like, a international film that really nobody's talking about but there's a really small niche of people that are searching it so I do well and then sometimes it's this huge movie that everyone's talking about and I'm not getting hits because there's too much competition so maybe my time had nothing to do with it maybe the competition is the reason why one did better than the other it's really it's almost like throwing darts at the wind but um I am definitely an analytics girl and I'm looking every single day and I'm trying to see what's doing well and what's not. Um, for me in particular, last comment, I know we're at 20 right now, um, the how-to videos do really well for me. So that is something that we're really going to push forward doing. So how-to, I cook a lot. I mean, I cook a lot naturally. So, you know, maybe I'll just start I'll start doing videos of me just doing stuff that I normally do that people don't know how to do. Like one of my videos is like how to cook artichokes. I make artichokes all the time. And it's it's got like it's got like thousands of views, and it was a grainy, it was a ridiculous video that I made so many years ago. And I just told my husband, take a take a video of me making these artichokes. I bet you these people people don't know how to cut up artichokes. And um, it was not highly stylized. It was not done on a really good camera. It's just me in a dark kitchen trying to make artichokes. So the things that you know that you take for granted that you do every single day, there's people out there that want to know that information. So slice it thin. Think about all the things that you do on a regular day on a regular basis that you can provide information for. You might be thinking, I know this. This is so easy. Like why would anybody need to know that? But people do need to know that. So um, don't be afraid to put it out there. And okay, last, last thing. Don't get caught up on the numbers. This is the other thing I wanna say. Like I literally have videos that have like 45 views. I don't care because I know in a year that 45 view video is gonna have a few thousand hits because that's how YouTube works. So I, I don't care right now. Like I don't care. I wake up in the morning, I sort of scroll up and I see how everybody did lot the night before. And I'm like, cool, like went up 20 views, whatever, because I know collectively all of this adds up it will all add up and if I do a new video every single day it will all add up in six months I'm gonna have 600 videos or I can't do fast math but I'm gonna have so many more new videos up that I didn't have before and they're all gonna be earning money so yeah okay some only have 45 some have 400 some have 4,000 they all go into the same pot and they all add up to give me income. So I don't care. Like I don't it's not I don't go crazy about how many subscribers you have, how many um you know, how many hits it got overnight, how many hits it got in a week. Just keep filming, keep filming, keep uploading, keep editing, keep getting better, keep getting more comfortable. And then in a year's time, look back on everything that you did and look for trends. I mean, see what worked best for your audience. See who your audience is. I mean, that's really what this is about. Who are you talking to? Um, so that's it. That's my video on YouTube. 23 minutes. I didn't mean to have it that long, but I hope it was informative for you guys. Again, this is something that I'm truly doing. Oh, I'm sorry. I just like burped on a YouTube video. Um, this is something that I'm truly doing right now with you guys as I speak. And I hope in some way that it has helped you and made you feel better about um, your process as well. If you are starting a YouTube channel, you can just leave a link below and I'll check it out. And I hope you subscribe and like this video. And until next time.